Вопросы? Меня просили, чтобы те, кто не, не понимают по-русски, чтобы я в общем, говорил по-английски. Так что, I'm going to switch into English as of now, and it'll be a little bit of a linguistical salad because most of the terms are obviously in Church Slavonic or Russian. But most of the discussion that I'll have will be in English, so bear with me on that. <clears throat> so this is the second in the series of workshops. The first one, those of you who were able to attend, was the basic music grammar and theory. This uh, is on the structure of common services uh, and uh, for choir members, uh, the way that our uh, church folks are laid out. So, as a preference, uh, as a prelude to this, uh, the structure of the services uh, can also be called Bogoslutevne Ustav. Okay? And basically what that is, <clears throat> is a, an itemized list of those things that uh, are part of our church services. Uh, they are called Tikikon, and Slavyansky Tikikon, the one that we use today, was adapted from the uh, Tikikon of Jerusalem uh, towards the end of the 17th century, and it was adopted by the Russian Orthodox Church. The Tikikon literally is following in order. So you have a list of things, like the recipe. You have a list of things that comprise your recipe. The church service has a tipikon, which is like a recipe for what goes into the service. And it sounds like it's a very rigid and, and universal thing, where in practice it isn't. Tipikon is adapted by, by monasteries, by cathedrals, and by parishes, and the adaptation really takes into account the specific requirements and circumstances. Okay. So what, when somebody says tipikon, it shouldn't mean to you that it's an absolute list of everything that happens every place the same way. Tipikon is a framework which is adapted. The ultimate authority for how church services are conducted at the parish level is the parish priest. He is he is the one that decides what, how the tipikon is implemented. And obviously the choir and the deacon and everybody else that's participating in the, in the service is obliged to follow the pastor's direction. The pastor's direction are obviously subject to hierarchical approval. So, that's the, so the, the point here is when you hear ustav or tipikon, it's not one thing. It's an outline that's implemented in different ways in different places. Generally, I'm going to use the word generally an awful lot today because anybody, uh, the, the church service structure, although it may seem to be, you know, we're orthodox and we haven't changed anything since the first century and so forth, that's all true. But the actual implementation is, is actually quite different and quite dynamic. So I'm going to use words like generally an awful lot. Generally, uh, ustav at, in, in monasteries is, is more complete in its implementation. In other words, everything that's supposed to be read, everything that's supposed to be sung, more than likely is included in the services. Uh, very little is omitted. Many or all of the prayers are chanted. And there's, there's, a, there's, there's a significance to that that I'll go over later. And in many times what you'll see is if you open up a book for a service, you'll see that some stihira or some prabai or something has to be read more than once. Generally, in, in, in monasteries, when that happens, they actually read it the indicated number of times, two or three sometimes. At cathedrals, cathedrals generally have more complete implementation of the stuff than parish churches. And part of the reason for that is because you have generally uh, bishops there, you have some sort of brotherhood of monks. So generally cathedrals reflect closer to monastic style of services than parish churches. Uh, so 
I wanted to give you that background because now everything else that I'm going to be talking about in the structure of services is pertaining to our parish. Okay? So, there are some guiding principles of the services that we have that, that St. Stefan and, and, and I and, and Marina went over in, in, when, when we got here. And, it, and, and the guiding principles were this, that all of the elements of a service be retained in the service. Okay? Uh, include all those elements that are significant to the commemoration. Now, one will think, you know, it's a service. The reality is that every day there are multiple saints, multiple icons, multiple liturgical events, prasniki, that are, are spread all throughout the year. And so, every time that we come Saturday night or during the week, in practice, we are serving Siyanashne, but its, its components vary depending on whether there's a saint that's being commemorated, or an event, or some major holiday. So the guiding principle in our services is that elements that are significant to the commemoration be included in the service. So for example, uh, tomorrow night there will be a service for St. Vladimir. It would make no sense at all to have the Sienersmen be devoid of his trapai, of sihiri about him, and, and, and kanon about him. It would make no sense why serve the service. Okay? So the, the important thing is to keep the elements that are significant to the commemoration. And this could be saints, so sihiri, kanon, trapai, kandaki, prakimni, stihi. Those are the things that are written specifically for events or groups of events, and those are the things that we need to retain in our service. We have what I call a rational balance between reading and chanting, and I'll go over this in a minute. And the abbreviations that we do, that every parish does, that every cathedral does, things that we abbreviate from the normal 100% uh, implementation of Tzikhi Kuan, uh, they have, they need to be uh, such that the structure and the sense of the service remain intact. Okay. And all, of course, all of these guidelines come from the pastor and the, 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 the altar services and, and choir members are, of course, required to implement those. So this little chart talks really is, is out of a communication course. And, and so the, the x-axis, if you will, is one person speaking on one tone, like I am to, right now. The next, and, and this is just, just categories, the next is one person singing or chanting. This is multiple people reading at the same time. This is multiple people chanting. And this is many people singing something elaborate and polyphonic. Okay. And on this side is oral communication clarity. Okay. So treat it as an XY type graph. And the point of this is that one person speaking on one tone is the most clear communication that you can have. I think everybody that understands English can understand what I'm saying now. If I, if I started singing this, the singing would get in the way of the words a little bit. And if I asked four or five people to come up and read with me, the chance that we would read exactly the same way and inflect the words the same way are fairly low. So the clarity of oral communication is greatest here and least here. Okay? At the same time, there are things that we become familiar with in church services. I don't think there's a person in this room that doesn't know what Shanak. That's a very familiar thing. Vaskriyasne Trapadi Kandaki, the beginnings of Gospadi Vazvar, Sakya Dikhanya. Those are the kinds of things that you hear every week. The words are the same. The tune changes, but the words are the same. So, in terms of familiarity, those things that are repeated often obviously are the most familiar. The things that are least familiar are the special tihiri, the special kanoni, 
that are read maybe once a year. For example, uh, what we'll be reading tomorrow night for Veliki Rabnaposnik Nats Vladimir. We read those once a year. So nobody knows those. And what, what the rational basis of our church service is today is that those things that are the most familiar, we tend to sing. Because since people know them already, the communication clarity, although it's low, will still get the message across to us in our parishioners. On the other hand, those things that are uncommon, those we generally read because the communication clarity is the biggest. So as an example, uh, let's take a stihira that we sing once a year. And we get together and we sing it, let's say, on Chitur de Glas. I, I don't know it very well. The singers, uh, the, the choir doesn't know it very well. So we'll stumble through it and we'll sing it, but it won't be as clear as if Marina reads it. In other words, if you're listening, you'll understand what, what the Stichir is about far easier if it's read. And so that, that, that's the way that we construct the way that we do Gospeli Vazvah. That's the way that we do Nechwanitia and other cases that I'll go through. But I wanted to get this concept across, that the clearest form of communication is spoken by one person. The least clear is when many, many people are singing, especially something that's elaborate. So, as I said, the balance of what I'm going to be talking about is our, and I under, underline, current implementation of Gustav for our parish. That implementation may or may not be the same that's used in cathedrals and other parishes, and other parishes, and that's okay. It may or may not be the same as what was used in this parish 40 years ago, and that's okay. It may or may not change sometime in the future. And that's also okay, provided that it be according to Ashtya Nastayatsin is void. Because ultimately, it's his responsibility to make sure that the clarity and the sense of the church services that he officiates makes sense to the parishioners. So, diving into what I'm calling common services, Vicernia, uh, Vigil, uh, uh, Vigil, Vespers, Vespers, Utrinia, and, and Pierovichas, Matins, first hour. Then Praskenidia, that we don't often uh, really talk about, Trecichas, uh, Stoichas, third and uh, six hours, and the Liturgia. And for your comfort and convenience, I've color coded these according to the book colors that we use upstairs. <laughs> So, Vichernia. Vichernia is, uh, it really has two main elements as far as, let, let me also preface. Um, I have spent exactly zero hours in seminary, okay? So when it comes to things devotional and spiritual, I'm going to maybe touch on a few things, but I'm by no means an expert, I'm not qualified to talk about it. So I'm going to limit that part of the discussion as much as possible. By way of commercial, Next season, uh, our series will include a lecture by Tzed Stefan, maybe more than one, on exactly that, what the devotional, the spiritual, and symbolic aspects of the services are. So I'm going to stay clear of that because I'm not competent to discuss it. But in general, the chairman has two functions, my interpretation. One, it, it includes an, an awful lot of material about the, about the specific uh, a c commemoration that's going on, a saint, uh, 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 some event, or, or something like that. That's the first. And the second is it is a reflection of the Old Testament. It spans from the creation of the creation of the world through just just uh, just not reaching the birth of Christ. And as you'll see, uh, there are a number of, of things that are sung and read that specifically point to that. Utrinya, on the other hand, goes from the birth of Christ through his resurrection. Okay. 
And it also, just like Pichernia, includes many, many of the elements that are commemoration specific. So if you say to me, uh, could you give me Vicerna? I will say, no, I can't, unless you tell me for what saint, uh, you know, in, in what day. There's just no such thing as a generic Vicerna. Same thing with Utrecht. Proskenitia is the service that most of you see Ajit Stefan serving in the altar when you're arriving to liturgy. And Proskenitia really has two elements to it. In ancient times, when people got together for services, they actually brought things like bread and wine. Okay? They brought it, they offered it as a gift, they, they brought it to the priest. And, and then the service went on to, to, to go to the Eucharist. Nowadays, Praskemitia is the first part of liturgy at which the offering of bread is taken. I think choir members have a hand in this. Because when we did stewardship for liturgical supplies, part of that is, is, the, uh, is the wine that's used. So we actually are doing, like in the old days, we are bringing this. But instead of everyone bringing a bottle every Sunday, we do this with our support of the, of the stewardship. The other very important part of Prospenitia is that all those who have uh, 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 given the books, commemoration books, every one of those names is mentioned. So this is a very important part of the service. And so if you get to, to liturgy early enough and you can submit your prayer book, then certainly your, your names will be amongst those that, that it's, it's on praise for. And then of course liturgia, which is the most important single service that we have because it features the, uh, the, the taking of communion. So, that's, that's sort of how these stack up. Vicernia in Utrinia, um, bear with the analogy. We, we have nowadays, you know, uh, athletic award things, we have movie guild award things and so forth, where people that, that you know, uh, hit so many home runs or made so many movies and so forth, they have testimonials. And part of that testimonial is that they talk about, well, gee, what did they do and how great that all is. And thousands of people attend these things and they televise them. Okay? Well, in a, in, I don't mean to be crude or anything, but in a real sense, Vichernia and Utrinia are the equivalent of the SP Awards and the Country Music Awards and every other kind of award for saints. And I don't mean that in any degrading fashion. What I mean is to give, give people in our lifetime and in our society a sense of how important that is. The fact that somebody hit a home run or whatever and so forth, that's all great. But the people and events about which we learn in Vichernia and Utenia, that in my mind should have the same attention and glamour and everything else for saints who actually did far, far more than probably any of us are going to do. Okay, so this is a little bit more for, for the choir member types. Throughout this presentation, there are several cases where I make this big, nasty-looking red star. And, and uh, the, the reason for that is that just about everything that we sing is in response to something that the priest or deacon says. Okay. There are very, very few times when we'll go from one thing that we sing to another, rapid fire, without anything in between. Okay. In those cases, we need to, as choir singers, we need to think ahead and prepare that so that when we go from one thing to the next, so that, that there's not a, a, an interruption and people don't know what they're doing, books are dropping on the floor and so forth. And so in, in, in my industry, and I'm maybe in, in yours, there's a thing called the five P's. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. So these are, for those of you that have these notes at home and those of you who are in the choir, look up where the red stars are. And so the next time that you're in a service, pay attention to when those red star spots are coming so that you're prepared. <laughs> okay, so this is roughly how I'm gonna go through the balance of the discussion. 
for those of you who, who sing in the choir, you'll notice that the, that the black, bold uh, uh, items are actually physically taken from the tabs that are in our music books. Okay? And when I say tabs, this is from the liturgy, these things here, okay? All of those black, uh, black bold items are exactly as, 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 they, uh, as they appear in the sections of your books. So let's talk about, uh, uh, let's talk about Gichieri. Предначинательный псалом, благослови душе моя Бога. That that psalm actually is an account of the creation of the world. And so, when when we strive to arrive early and be there for the beginning of Siena, that's that's the reason because we want to participate and glorify God for His creating the world, the seven days of creation. Very shortly thereafter, after the world was created, in, in, in relative time, man was expelled from, from Eve, the, the whole Adam and Eve thing. Okay. So the balance of the Chernia talks about how do we get back in? Repentance, prayer. Okay. And it also talks about the prophecy of the Lord coming to earth. Okay. So, as far as organization goes, the, the first tab, the Nishinatim Ipsalom, that's where there are multiple versions of it. In the next tab, Blazen Mut, in the beginning of it, there are several versions of Itinya that we sing. Then there's a, there's a set of Gospodivazvach for all of the eight tones in the next section. Then Svetitihi. And Svetitihi actually um, was. Has, has, has two senses of it. One was the, the softness of the setting of the sun that occurred someplace in, in, in and around the Holy Land. But the other is the prophecy of the coming of the Lord. And the fact that it's Svetitihi and not Svet Gramadni is very important because if you recall, although the Son of God arrived as, as, as the king of, of, of all, he arrived in a very timid manger sort of situation. There was no room for him at the end, never mind some big glorious thing. That's what Sietitihi reminds us, is he came in a very soft, in a very uh, quiet way, and, and that's part of the prophecy. Okay, so when you're singing Sietitihi, that, that's, the, that's the background for it. The next section, Prakim Nenevichirni. Yes, it has the Prakim name. We have a couple of different versions of it. But also, it has the Prasitsinik Tinya that follows the Dobi Gospri, which is, which is red. And for those times when we have uh, the Litiya, the various types of Gospri Pamili that are sung for it. So if we have Litiya, and I tell you that we're going to be singing Moskovska, you'll find it here in the section of Prakim. Okay? Stichirne Stichovne is the next section, and 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 Stichirne Stichovne really those are uh, those again are commemoration specific. The ones that we tend to sing most often on Saturday nights are obviously Vaskresne, and there's eight of them, one for each tone. But if you come to a non-Saturday night, a special service, you'll find that Stichirne Stichovne it doesn't. It isn't at all the things that we sing on Saturday. It'll be specific to a saint or a holiday or whatever it is. Pogorodichny, uh, is the next tab, and and it could be a little bit of a misnomer because Pogorodichny really implies that it's a Saturday service. Okay, and, and again you have the eight, uh, the you have the eight Vaskresne uh, tones. But if you come to, to a service that's not a Saturday night service before a routine so-called Sunday, you'll find that this is also something completely different. It could be a different gloss, it, but it's certainly the text is commemoration specific. But on normal occasions for Saturday services, this is where you'll find Bogorodichny. And as it implies, it has to do with Bogorodichny. So, so there's a teaching or there's a glorification of the Mother of God at the Slava or Inayimala. Okay. Then Linya Pushayashi, 
Minyat Bashar, as, as, as you all know, is to St. Simeon's prayer. It's the one that he said at the time when Christ was brought to the church. He, and and he, was for, he was foretold that he would not die until he actually witnessed Christ. And that's his prayer. Now notice that as you get into Linya Kushayati in this part of the service, you're already starting to talk a little bit about the, the birth of Christ. And so the birth of Christ is the end of the Old Testament. And so it's no coincidence that here you're getting close to the end of the chair. Okay, so you, we've, we've gone through two things here. The prophecy of the Old Testament and the commemoration of either of us be seen the, the following Sunday, which at Stefan is called Malaya Pascha, okay, because it, it, so it's be seen, it talks about the resurrection, or the commemoration of a saint or some other event. Now, <clears throat> If you think about the text, that's actually the archangel saying to her that you're married full of grace, uh, you, you've been selected to be the mother of God. Again, going towards the birth of Christ, the end of the, of, of the Old Testament. In the case where if it's a non-Saturday non Sunday, routine Saturday Sunday service, at this point, Instead of Bogoroyetsa or maybe in combination with it, there'll be a trapai or several trapai that are that are commemoration specific. Okay, and where do you find these? Well, you'll find these either on the little sheets that, that, that we produce or in the service booklets that we have for specific holidays. Okay. So this is not always Bogoroyetsa So The next thing is Malaya Slovoslovia which we occasionally sing. It's, it's sort of optional. Uh, and Malaya Slovoslovia is actually not part of the Chernia. It is the first part of, of, of uh, Utrin. But in, it, because it follows right away, that's the reason why it's here. But technically, Malaya Slovoslovia uh, is, is the beginning of the Psalmia, the sixth six psalm. And that's what, that's what begins the Utrin service. So, uh, again, more for choir members. The, the, the organization of the music uh, in, in our books. You remember this is the first part of the chair. So within each one of those sections, there is more than one that we sing. There's the abichodne, which is always first. The simplest one that we sing, abichodne, is always the first one in the book. And then the various arrangements by different composers, those are listed alphabetically. Okay, that's the organization. So if I say, uh, you simply turn to the first page and it should be there. Okay? If I say, uh, then ch being at the end of the alphabet, you'll more than likely find it at the end of that section. Okay? The Blazen Muth section, as I told you, we put the Iktinya at the beginning uh, of this section. So again, same same sort of thing. You go by by alphabetic within the section. And in the case of Blazen Muth, again, Bakhmetiva, the Bichodne will always be first. Then you go either Arkhandinsky, Pachayevsky, Troitsa, Sergeyevsky, Lavri in alphabetical order. So for those of you who have had a mystery of where are these things, uh, that's the logic behind it. So now that, now that you know the logic, you should be able to find these things a little easier. <laughs> um, as I said, Nitsiya, uh, uh, those are generally, in, in our parish practice, those are generally done uh, in, uh, on, on major holidays. Bogorovice <laughs> could be replaced by by Trapari and Malaya Slovoslovia. So, uh, let's look now at Gospodi Vazvah. So that's that's the position of Gospodi Vazvah. This is the structure of Gospodi Vazvah. There's an initial thing that we always sing, 
Господи, вызвать тебе услышь, я могу услышать, я могу услышать, и так далее, depending on the tone. And then there's a set of ten stichi. For normal Saturday, uh, Sunday services, these stichi, they reflect the part of the service, and they, they re re reflect the, the attitude of that service. If you look at them, меня есть правда, что ты должен делать так. Из глубины возвать тебе, Господи, Господи, услышь меня. We are praying, and the reason that we're praying the way that we are here is we just got kicked out of heaven. Okay, so uh, all of these stihi have the sense of how do I make it back into your good graces, Lord? Okay, and so. <clears throat> What, what, what typically happens is for a Sunday service, all ten stihi are relevant. And in between each, there are stihi. Okay. It's very important to retain every one of the stihi, whether you actually have a stihi to read there or not. Because the stihi are actually the skeleton of the service. How much meat is between the bones is a different story. But the skeleton of the service is defined by those tiki. And that's the reason why, let's say, uh, you know, we, we want to abbreviate the service. If we wanted to do that, it would be essential to maintain every one of the tiki and simply, in some cases, omit the tiki in between. That's a judgment call. But the elimination of tiki that are required, that's not a judgment call. That's a part of the service. So if you wanted to really abbreviate something very much and omit this, 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 and this stihir, uh, if you wanted to, you would still need to read the stihi to maintain the structure. Does that nuance make sense? Anybody said no? Good. So that's the structure of Gospodi Vazvav. Similar, but shorter, is Tihir and Nistihol. It, again, has the same type of structure. It has Tihi, and it has Tihir. Okay. And typically, because this is a far shorter part of the service, here the omission of Tihir doesn't happen that often. But again, it's the Tihi. That, 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 that make the service. And if it's not a Saturday or Sunday service, then actually these stihi that are, that are written here, they'll be replaced by commemoration specific stihi. So they are actually the skeleton that, that, that contains the service. So here's our red dot thing. Between the end of the last Steve Nestichol, which in the Sunday service is a Bogorodichin, and then no intonation by the priest. We go from one to the other. Okay. So what I normally do is I will announce, you know, if it's if, if it's a if it's a holiday service, you have your books, and there it says, you know, Slavri Nina on Stichol. If it's a regular service, I'll tell you, singers, which class we're doing. And I'll tell you which Nunya Pushayati we're doing after that. So before we get there, you need to, to mark each one so that you can go from one to the other. Okay. There's also a nuance here. Okay. Yes, we need to do this, choir singers. We need to go from the end of one thing to the beginning of the other fairly quickly in situations like this with the red stars. The contrapositive is that where there is no star, there is no need to go quickly from what you just sung to the next thing because there's time. And that's the reason why I ask you when we're singing something, sing it to the end without using the music yet. Sing it to the end, properly end it, and then while there's an intonation or a prayer or something else, then play with the voice. <coughs> okay, continue. So this is the overall structure. Again, each one of these tabs is, uh, is something that you've seen in the book, Choir Singers. Okay. This is the beginning of the New Testament. Think of the words, 
woke this voice, he had peace and up. The Lord has arrived to us. How did he do that? He did that through his birth. So this is, again, the idea of the New Testament starting, and, and the first part of it is Bogus Wood. Now, it says in our tabs, Bogus Wood, Ivas Kriyas In reality, if it's a holiday, if it's not a Saturday, Sunday, then there will be holiday trapari instead of the ones that, that, that we would sing. All of that is, is published in our trapai conduct sheets, which I'll get to in a minute. Then you have sections that Ikaf Babilonsky here and Pakayania here. Those are, are, are designed to, to make it easy during the Niki Post, the same with, with one book. But Narikat Vilonsky is, is only uh, sung from the from the uh, week of Kulu Sena, Mesapusne, Sirapusne, and Pakayanya is always from Mitri Ferisea up until the Sunday preceding uh, the, the Lord's entry into, into Jerusalem. So, uh, Bokus Woods uh, is, 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 uh, is the welcoming, if you will, of the Lord coming in, in flesh to the world. Kathisme, that, that follow them, uh, are, are, are really uh, generally oriented about uh, contemplation of, of, our, of our sinful nature and, and the improvement thereof. So, the, the, the structure of Bogus Boys, I'll go through in a minute. Uh, af, after, uh, after, the, the, after we finish Bogus Boys, we go directly into, into Kathism. Palele, which in some churches is sung every Sunday, irrespective of whether it's in, in, in the Tibikon or not. We don't do that, we follow the Tibikon and sing it when it's called for. That is the uh, the the proclamation the, 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 uh, the, the proclamation and, and gratitude for, for the mercy of the Lord that that, that he did by by his uh, death and resurrection for, for our salvation. The uh, which again we don't sing uh, ordinarily under the Viki Post is a reflection of it when, when the, when the uh, Hebrew people were in captivity in Babylon. Part of that was because they strayed away from the Lord. And so many of them uh, who you know, lamented the fact, oh gee, why did we do these stupid things and we set ourselves away from the Lord and we had idols and so forth, and now we lament that situation. So this is a Bilika Posni style thing. Angelski Sobor, Bogosavieni Sigos, Kudi Naučinja Prodanjetrin. That is a set of, of texts uh, that are very happy in nature, really. It talks about the, the events just after the, the resurrection of Christ. And again, uh, the, 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 the nature of Utrinja, okay? New Testament, salvation, resurrection, and, and, salva and, and, and salvation of the people. Воскресение Христово видевшее, again, uh, very, uh, a very happy uh, uh, thing that we sing in, 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 uh, in commemoration of the, of, of, of the resurrection of Christ. The, 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 so that was sort of the first part uh, of, of Udrinia, and that's not for, that's simply what, what fit on the page. The, the, the next part of it is Vaskresni Irmasi, we'll talk about Irmasi uh, in, in detail in the each of the Salman Gospada. Something that's not in our books is a section on Svitsinia. And, uh, uh, and, and that's simply because uh, it's been common practice, at, at least for the last, last decade or so, to sing Sviatus with Bognach in, in a relatively simple manner. But the point is that before Sakir Dikhanya and after the after we finish Kanon, there is a point where the priest and talks, yeah, and we repeat, and he says it again, and we repeat, and so forth. But that's not in your book, it's just something that we sing more or less by, by memory. Then uh Sakir Dikhanya ends with Preblogoslavenni Si Bogoronice, again, that's just a section with, with you know, music uh, for each of the tones. Then Velika Slovovia, 
Trapani was Kriyasana and Brahmi were awarded. So we talked about that a little bit. Dilishi Gustav Maya Bosmada is, is, a, is a, a song of adoration by the Mother of God to, uh, the, uh, to the Lord. Sakra Dikhania, as we'll see, uh, has the same format as we had in the beginning for Bosmadi Vazvach, except that, remember we talked about the stihi, how each one of them sort of had a, 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 a penitential aspect to it. Here it's directly different. These are kholebne, kholitsevog. Now, now we're, we're, we're past the early part, and now we're, we've gone beyond the, the, the resurrection. We're now praising. So I think in, in some cases these are called praises. Dilika Slavoslovia. Uh, has its own section with a bunch of different arrangements in it by different composers. And so Vilika Slovaslovia is, is, is a, 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 a prayer, prayer of gratitude. And when we get to the part of uh, that, that has a, a, a dual meaning to it. In the old days, and, and to, to this day, like a, on the form, uh, these services, when they're done completely, okay, Utrinya uh, will actually wind up ending in the morning. So by the time you get to this point in Utrinya on a form, you actually are at sunrise. So when the priest says, Slava Tsibina Pokazavsu Bunam Svet, he's talking about two things. One is the sun that's coming up, but the other, the symbolic, is uh, glory to, to, to you for, for, the, for the light. The light in this context is talking about the light of truth that, that God brought to it. So that, that's, the, that's the dual meaning of Siyat. Okay. And, and then the, the, there's a Trapai the, the, on, on the, the services that, that occur on Saturday and Sundays of Askresne. In the case of a service uh, for a saint, like for example for, for Vladimir tomorrow night, what you'll have is after Slavoslovia, You'll have to turn in your text back to the Trapai of Lodiga and sing it, okay? Because that's the structure. After Slovoslovia is the Trapai of the commemoration. In our books, typically we're commemorating Saturday, Sunday. When we're off in a, in a different case, it will be the commemoration specific. And of course, Bratzdranli Voyevoids, Bratzdranli Voyevoids is, is uh, it is, is part of actually first, uh, the first hour, Pierre Chatsa. It's not actually a part of Utenia, per se. And it's a, it's, a, it's a hymn to the Mother of God as being the, the leader of, of, of all those who are victorious against all sorts of evil. Okay, so let's talk a little bit, uh, now I understand why I have this. When we go through the chair and we hit Stihira and Stihobi, many times uh, we'll do, especially Saturday Sunday services, we'll do the Sunday uh, Stihira for the particular class, for the tone. And then there'll be readings and, and we'll have the same, uh, the same stihi. But on the Bhagavadgita, these are these are often commemoration specific. So where do you get these? And so this is this is an illustration of one of the text sheets that we use every week. For those of you who are not in the choir and get my emails, these are usually attached to them. So if you want to see what the words are, you know they're there for you to look at. And so one of the places where you find what is it that you need to sing in here is on the text sheet. Typically, I'll put it up on the top and I'll indicate that it's either for Ilinia or Slava Ilinia, and it'll have the text and the gloss and so forth. So that's one place where when you come to church on Saturday, choir members, come 10 or 15 minutes early and pick up that sheet and look at it because it, it provides you an awful lot of clues to what's going to go on. First, first and foremost, is it's going to tell you what the, what the, what the, the gloss is of the week. Secondly, 
it'll tell you pretty much in order what sorts of special things are going to happen. Okay, in this application, we have a stihira that's not one of the regular Bhagavad but is one that is that, that's commemoration specific. Okay, and it'll also tell you on uh, the the order for liturgy on the next day. And here, it indicates which parts of, of these trapari are going to be sung on board the sports. Okay. I have another example that is, uh, illustrates it a little bit better. So on Sunday, in the trapari, we would start from the top and simply march right down through this. Okay. As it happens, in, in liturgy, one of the few sections that's really commemoration specific is the trapari because it has to do with the event. Now, you obviously, on Sundays, you have the Skeasni Trapai, because it's, it's a Sunday. But then you have other Trapai, the one to our church. And then, typically, Trapai that commemorate the holiday, either about a saint or about something else. Okay. So, since the... Uh, since the, the, the Saturday and the Sunday services are that closely linked, it shouldn't be a surprise that some of the special commemorative things that we sing on Sunday are also going to be sung on Saturday. And in fact, 99 times out of 100, that's true. So these indications, this one, this one, and the, and the two up top, those are, are the key to how Volga Sport works. So when we get to Volga Sport, at the very beginning of, of, uh, of Udin, we sing Volga Sports in whatever the glass is of the week, first, second, through eighth, okay? And then we sing the Trapai for, uh, of that glass. And we do it once or twice. Typically, it's done twice, okay? And that's what that two stands for, okay? Then the, 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 the general structure is trapai, trapai, slava, trapai, ginini, trapai. That's the general structure of Volkis voice. So what this says is that after you've sung this trapai twice, you sing slava and the trapai of the saint, then ginini, and whatever the Bhagavadisha is. Okay? And, and, and I, I announced those anyway at the beginning of the... Of, uh, uh, of Utrinya. Uh, uh, but if you arrive a few minutes early and look for those keys, then what I tell you, you're not going to have to panic and do something quick. You already know pretty much what you need to find to get your book together. So Volga Sport. Um, this is one of those rapid fire places. Okay? Before Volga Sports happens, ideally, when you first arrive at church, if you can make it a few minutes before the beginning, or at least during Sister Psalm, you need to look at and, and find what is it that we're going to be singing on Slava and what on Inenia, okay? Slava is most often on the text sheets. Inenia is, is very often in the section of Bogorodish in the Volga Sport, okay? So for this section, to, to sing that section, what you would need is to know what loss it is, to look in the text sheet for what the thing is that we're going to be singing twice, to understand what is going to be sung for Slava, probably on the text sheet, and then what the Bogorodichin is going to be, typically in this section of the book. And since after we're done Bogorodich and we go straight into Kathisma, that's one of the Red Star places. Okay. We're, we're, when we're done with Bogorodich and the Volkis Boys, we immediately start Kathisma. So you need to know which one we're going to sing. Mark it for yourself so that as soon as we're done with this, you can flip the page and, and, and be listening to the tone. Now, the way that we have been doing it and the way that I'd like to continue to do it is that after you've looked at the overall plan and, and you've, you've identified which, which version of the Kathisman we're going to be singing, on Volga Sports, which we interact with the priest, he has, he has a steep, we sing Volga Sports in Isa now. The first three times, there's some four total, the first three times, 
so that the priest can be heard and so that we can have some overlap between ourselves, we sing those relatively soft and at a pretty good clip. Okay? So you really need to watch. Okay? And notice, in Nieza Glushaya Duchadienstva, so these are, these are soft, uh, simply to provide some sort of a thing from the choir to the priest, from the choir to the priest. The fourth time that we sing Bogus Voids, and this is just Bogus Voids, when we sing that the fourth time, we, by that time, the priest is done doing his, his tihi. So there's nobody to be quiet for. And that's why I've asked here for there to be a crescendo for the last one of this, so that when we hit the first trapai, we're already singing it in a, in a fairly uh, massive way. Okay. And then very important, after, after we sing uh, whatever the Bhagavad is, flip to Kathisma as quickly as possible and choir members get your ears on because I have very little time there to set it. You need to know what we're going to sing for Kathisma, okay? Get that straight in your head and open up and listen for the tonality so that we don't have gaps in the service. Okay, Prakimni. The Prakimni on Utrinya have, uh, have, a, have a structure to them that's common for 98% of Prakimni that you'll have. Nothing in the stop is 100%. And the, basically, the way that they start is that the, the alt, altar server, diacon or priest, will say the first and second parts of the parking in, in a rapid fashion. Okay? And for example, the, the one that we sang last night, is the first part of the whole parking The second part is, so the priest will actually say that entire text. We will sing that entire text, as we did last night. The, 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 the altar server will then recite a stich, which is not the same as the prakimen. We repeat the prakimen in its entirety. And then the third time, the altar server will say the first part of the prakimen. And we finish it. Uh, that's the form of Prakimni that works on Udrinya, Liturgia, and many, many other applications. Okay. Right after that, we have Sakya Dikhanya Dakhwari Gospoda, which follows exactly the same routine. Svishenik, Sakya Dikhanya Dakhwari Gospoda, we sing the whole thing. He has a steep. We sing the whole same thing. He says, and we'll do the same exact format. So, now a favorite topic of ours, come on. This is something that, that, that tends to baffle people. What I've tried to do is to put it in a, in a way that, that will make it graphically easy to understand. So the canon is comprised of, of nine pieces, okay? In typical practice, not during the uh, Viki post, the second one is omitted. Okay, so we go one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay? Uh, I'll just tell you a short story about the second one. Uh, I, many years ago, when we were in Boston, I, I was reading up on this stuff and I came across the reason why the second one is typically not sung. And the reason happens to be that it's of a particularly repentive nature. So on in, in, in services during the Nikipos, if you remember Kanon and the Ekliska, but there is in fact a second piece. And there are other services where it exists. But so I, I found that reason and just sort of put it together. That next Sunday, uh, that, that next Saturday night I was in church. And a young fellow that, that, that sang in the choir, we, we got the canon and, and we're singing it. And, and he sort of looked at me a little bit like an authority figure. And, and mind you, I just read this you know, during that week, first time. I had no idea about this. And so he, he says to me, Andrei, a почему вторую песню пропускают? Andrei, why do they skip the second one? 
and without skipping a beat, I just said, well, it's very repentant in nature, and it's, uh, it's taken out of the normal uh, Sunday services and turned away. And he, he was amazed that I knew this level of detail. I think it was just dumb luck. You know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. But I had that answer. He, would, he asked the right question for the right answer. So, the, 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 the structure is every piece, yeah, every, every uh, mode, uh, 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 I'm not sure how it's called it. Let's all call it piece. There's an irmos, which is the first part of it. Then it has multiple stihi and trapari, which are typically red. Okay. And then it has a katavasi. So that block of kesya one is repeated for each one of the pieces. Okay. The parts that are red, they have stihi and trapari. And if you notice, like last night, we sang the first, uh, the first Irmos, and then I think it was Yura began reading Vaskriyasne, Slava Gospodiu Svetomu Vaskriyasne Tvojimu, and then he read uh, 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 Atrapai. And then I think it was uh, probably Nikita, there was no Krista Vaskriyasne, Nikita read Prisitaya Bobrovica Spasinas and Atrapai. And then Marina, I think it was, read uh, I don't remember exactly, but basically and the uh, and, and the corresponding trapari uh, uh, to them. Then there was one on Slava and one on Inini. Okay. That's the form of every one of the songs of the canon. Okay. Our then be, between the third and fourth. In the sixth and seventh, there is an ikhtinya, an additional reading. These uh, can be sedaili, kandaki, ikasli. Those, uh, those are indicated in, in the tipikon as to what has to happen when. Okay. For our singer purposes, okay, we sing the irmos of each one of the songs. That, that's a rule. Okay. We also sing Katavasi, but we don't sing all of them. We sing the one for the first, the third, the sixth, the eighth after Clyde, and the ninth. Why do we do that? Because we do, and it's okay. In some churches, they sing every Katavasi for every, uh, for, for every song. At Sabor, they sing every Katavasya. In other churches, they abbreviate this tremendously, and some don't even sing Katavasya. So it's not that we're right or we're wrong. That's the practice in the cathedral, in the parish, and so forth. There's a little bit of logic to it. Okay? Traditionally, many parishes have sung Katavasya after the third, sixth, eighth, and ninth. That tradition is, is here as well. The reason we sing the first one is if any of you are speed readers, you know, uh, if, you, if you need to read a, a long document, typically what I do is I'll read the first sentence and the last sentence of the paragraph. And if it makes sense, then I don't need the paragraph anymore going on. Okay. Well, uh, Kamon is a little like that. Not exactly, but. If you start with this katavasi, you're sort of starting in the middle. So that's why it's appropriate to, to start with the first one and then you know skip according to tradition makes sense. Uh, off topic, I'll tell you. Uh, those of you who have ever heard about the Boston Pops, has anybody not heard of the Boston Pops? Boston Pops is the, is the entertaining part of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. They do Christmas concerts and, and, and light and stuff. And for the longest time, Arthur Fiedler was the conductor of the Boston Pops. And he was, you know, he was always pictured as this nice old gentlemanly, you know, grandfather type. Uh, where in actual practice, he was not that nice a guy. He was, he was a pretty thorny individual. And he hated to rehearse. 
So he would come in, you know, and the second chair players from the symphony and the others would be sitting there for trying to re rehearse Christmas pops. And he'd come in. All right, let's start from the middle. And he would just he would he would just mess with them like that. Let's start from the middle. Nobody knew what to play. So we don't want to start with the middle. That's that's the point. Okay. Couple of red dot places. From the katavasya of the first song, first piesnya, to the irmos of the third piesnya. Nothing happens in between there. That's a rapid fire spot. Okay. So, yeah, I wish I had something to point with. Uh, <laughs> I need a longer hand. So, when Medina is reading this, or, or Yura, or, or somebody is reading this, okay, obviously our first responsibility is to listen, because that's what the, that, that's what the whole point of the reading is, for us to understand what is being talked about. But in this particular case, as you're listening, you really need to get this together. Okay, so you're going to sing this, you need to have something in the book that can get you to this quickly. Okay? Other situations like this. Um, eighth Irmos. Once we sing it, we sing the Katavasya. <coughs> so this is Fari, Buddhist Link, with my name, Zubosby, and so forth. Then we sing the Katavasya. There is a uh, uh, there, there is an intonation here, but this Dilichi Dusalmaya Gospada is in a completely different section. So again, as you're, as you're in this part of the service, at the latest, at, at this part of the service, you need to mark the fact that you're going to a Katavasya. Where is it? You need to mark the Dilisha Dushamaya goes to the version that we're going to sing. Yesterday we sang this Nikola. And from here, you need to get back to the Irmo. So you have two steps that you have to plan ahead on in, in this situation. Overall, on Kanon, okay? This unfortunately is a good place where people's minds tend to wander. Somebody's reading, it's none of my business. You know, I've been in church for an hour and a half. This is where minds tend to wander, okay? In each one of these uh, piesni, as I said, there's Vaskresne, Kresta Vaskresne, Svetim, whatever the combinations are, these can change. What doesn't change is at some point in time there will be Slava Inenya or Inenya. When you hear the word Inenya, choir members, that means you have to get back in and start focusing. So, you know, if, 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 if your mind is wandering here, that's between you and the maker. But once you hear Inenya, you've got to get straight back, find what you're going to do, and be ready to sing. Because what we cannot tolerate is when it comes to either singing the next Irmos or Katavasya, for there to be running around the choir loft. Oh, 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 gee, I didn't know. Inenya, there's just, once you hear that, you've got about 35 seconds to, to get your idea. <clears throat> so I think we talked about this. Vitogia. Hey, can I ask a question? Sure. Just a quick question. Sure. Um, is the katavasya and what we sing prescribed in the Tipikon, or is that yes. so it is? Oh, because yeah. sometimes it seems like, oh, let's sing this. Or, no, 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 that's, no that, that's absolutely that's prescribed. prescribed. Yeah. One question. The second question. Can you give a quick overview of the voices and why we have different voices? Is it to cover the material over eight weeks? Um, you know, we have first, the, 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 what is the tones. Tones, 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 I'm sorry. What do you want to Excellent. Is that for another time? Uh, well, there's going to be a whole workshop on the eight tones. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I haven't done all of the research that I need to yet, okay? But um, there's, there's, there's sort of a two-ended scale here. The, the fathers basically determined that to do the exact same service, the exact same way every week and week out, is just going to get a little too redundant. Okay. 
On the other hand, they realized that if you do every day completely different, it's going to be impractical to be able to do the service. So that's why they established, uh, and this I think is, is even, uh, well, I, I won't, I'm afraid to say, that's why they established a repetitive cyclic thing. Okay. Did I answer your question? I think so. But I mean, the, the, every week when you repeat them, there's diff the words are different as well as the music. And is that is the point that you, and then you have a cycle. Right. So is that in order to cover the entire... Right. Um, right. So the text that you sing in the first Tihir of Gospel Yerosvach, mm -hmm. the first tone, is different from that same Tihir, eighth tone. Right. So by the time you get through, you cover... Yeah, you, you cover basically everything that they wanted to get covered in, in the eight-week cycle. Okay, so liturgia. Uh, there's really two parts of liturgia, two main parts. One is liturgia of Lashendim, which means anybody can attend. And then we'll see later on, uh, at this point, is liturgia Vierdik, which is, these are the catechumens, these are of the faith. Okay. So in the first part of liturgia, uh, and, and these literally, you know, like I showed you, you know, here's and so forth. So this this marches right through. The the when they're sung, and that's typically on, on Sunday services, and, and well, let's leave it for that, on Sunday services, those are psalms that have been abbreviated in what we sing that essentially our, great, uh, our gratitude to the Lord for all that he's done for mankind. It's not what we sing yet. Uh, is the, the, the teaching and the glorification of the second, uh, 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 Yitzhak, uh, the second face of God, the, the, the Son of God. And I, I have an error here. This, this shouldn't be a star here, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get to that later. And then Zalaviti Blazenstva are those things that we should strive to do to become closer to God. It's interesting that if you look at the Ten Commandments in Zalaviti Blazenstva, Ten Commandments say, Thou shalt not this, thou shalt not that, thou shalt not. So these are things you're not supposed to do. Okay? Mm -hmm. Zalaviti Blazenstva is different. It says, These are things you should strive to do. Okay? They all pull towards the same direction, but their orientation is different. Okay? Just a little thing to keep in mind when you sing. Okay. So these are they, these are and, and this is from the Sermon of the Mount, uh really so. when we typically sing that, that is actually uh, the commemoration of Christ uh, after his baptism coming out to the world and beginning his ministry. So when, when you see Atiyah Stefan coming out at Piri Yitzhi Proklanim okay, that symbolically is Christ coming out to the world with actual sermons and, and, and ministry. Okay. Uh, all of these uh, has, a, has a number of, of arrangements in order by conductors, by composers last name alphabetically. For the, for the majority of what we're saying, there are Ilitsi and Christu Tvemu. Ilitsi is for special Vyskotsky Prasniki, when we commemorate the uh, when, when, when a special thing about uh, uh, Christine. And Christu Tvemu, obviously, is services that are focused on the cross. Okay. Now, and for, for the first two, Bogosavi and, and Khali, these are, are called often antiphony, and the reason is because they're often sung antiphonally. We do that sometimes. They get changed out by special antiphony on certain holidays. The, and the, the one that, that will come to mind, the, the, the easiest, is on Troitsa, Pereobrazenia, Gospodskia, Brasniki. They'll have special antiphony, and then Molitomi Bogorotis Pasia, and then another one, Molitomi, and then So these two will be replaced from the normal thing that we sing on Sunday by special Ensiphone on the Sports Gay Prize. The third Ensiphone, Zapoti Blazenstva, 
in those same cases will not be sung, but will be sung as a third pensiform, which if you recall, is, is a is a stich that somebody reads, we read we sing the tripodium. There's another stich, we sing the tripodium. So that's how this part of the service will change on the sports gear prize. But the always stays. The singer always stays. As a matter of fact, that, that there was a there was an issue many, many years ago where uh, there was an altar server that, that sort of jumped the gun on that. And the choir master, who was a, a, a very, very knowledgeable seminary graduate, you know, all A's in liturgy, insisted on singing this. And, and the priest was angry that he, you know, I mean, there's a whole unplug. But the, the important takeaway for me, Yidinarodni is always there. Whereas these will change if, if, if there's a special, uh, uh, there's a special commemoration. Okay. As far as for choir members, where to find this stuff, it's really pretty much, you know, where it is. There's no, no hidden stuff here. Malif board is typically where Pridipsikopanipsik is. And we have the, the text-based one, that, that we always did the simple one. We have Constantina, we have the Gregis Gerasper, and so forth. So not, not a lot to, to be talking, you know, uh, to worry about here. Yeah, and, and I actually even mentioned the Pridipsikopanipsik. So then we get to the second part of liturgy. Again, from the standpoint of where stuff is in the book, this is all should be fairly straightforward. Okay, uh, you know the three Iktsinya uh, that we sing before Hirodimska. The first two are about the catechumens. Okay, uh, one one says catechumens depart, and the other prays for the catechumens. <coughs> The third one is actually Yivitse Birni. That's the one that really begins the, the, the liturgy of the faithful. And so after it comes Hirodimske Epesen, during Hirodimske Epesen, there's the Tidimisenia, the role that the translation of the gifts from the Zertenik, help me out. No, 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 no. Sacrifice table. Sacrifice table to the pristol. Okay. And the way that that's done is actually that's Viliki for. So when we're through singing the first part of Hirodimska, okay, and the Tetstifan and the altar service all come out Viliki for, that's actually the translation of the gifts from the, from the offering table to pristol. And that's also representative of Christ's entry into Jerusalem a week before his passion. So this is a, you know, this is a, a very, very special moment. And when we sing Yaakov at Seriah, okay, that's when we're, rep we, we, we're representing those who are taking up a leader the way that they did in Roman times. When you had somebody that went out and conquered big lands and was a big hero, the way that they would honor that person is they would have some sort of a, uh, a chair, for lack of a better thing, that they would hoist up on their spears. And so this hero would be singing on a chair, sitting on a chair, hoisted up in the air on the spears of soldiers. And that's the way they would parade him through the city and you know they throw flowers at him and shit and so forth. That's the image that we're singing about in Yaakov that said, yeah, as a as a as a tzad, as a as, as a god, and that's that's his entrance. If you remember, the entrance to Jerusalem. Vieru, <clears throat> uh, so there's there's Itini after the Hirudim step. Vieru uh, is, as you know, is, is the is a precise and concise uh, definition. Definition of our faith as it happens today, and Marina Clu uh, you know, you just reminded me. Today, when we sang Vieru, we were singing that stuff that those that see at the ecumenical councils that they determined to define our faith. Kind of a special moment for it in the service. Miris Mira, so. Between here and here, there's a, uh, 
you know, after theater comes Mila Smira, and, and that is, is, you know, is, is the point in the service to, to, during Tzidia Koyem, uh, when, when, the, uh, when the bread and wine actually turn to, to the body and, and, and blood of the Lord. The story the years, actually, as we're singing Tzidia Koyem, after that event happens, the priest is, is, uh, is, is praising and thanking God for that. And he especially, Izriadna, un, un, unconventionally, Izriadna, he makes an appeal to the Mother of God for us and for those, who, for those of us who are poor, uh, uh, in the other world. And that's why he says, Izriadna, and we sing the story in Yes, with or or Otsiviravitz of Angelopiaka, all of which have to do with the Mother of God. And we glorify her in response to the priest as he's making his gratitude for, for everything that has occurred during Tibetania. The next section, and, and as far as um, as, as far as where to find stuff, okay, all the Milas Mira are in order by conductor. Uh, this, the Itzini and, and Veru are, are all in one section. First Itzini, then the various types of Veru. The Stoina Yest, uh, that's a little trickier. The first part of the, the Stoina Yest tab. has each of the destroyed the yeast that we sing. Then it sort of changes from the destroyed the yeast to what's it around So all of the destroyed the yeast, this is from A to Z, or whatever the last letter is, then what's it around alphabetically and Angolopiaca alphabetically. So if you're in a Sunday service and you're looking for Chisnakov's destroyed the yeast and you see what's it around back up. Okay? If we're in Veliki Post and we just did Milis Mira and we need to do Otsibia Radovica and you find yourself looking at the story in the East, go forward. If we're in Paschalia and we have Angel Vapiasa the same and you're in either one of these, keep going to the end of the path. Okay, so you will not say in the story in the East to look for Parnaski Atibia Radovica. You will say Atibia Radovica and then you will do that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, 85 times out of 100, I'll say, the story the yes, but So you go to this tab, and very shortly you get but If it's Veliki Post, what's it there, Radu, it's a Smolensko. That'll be down here someplace. Angel Lopiasa, Litkovsko. Okay, so we have to memorize this. Yeah, yeah, just, and, and, and the tab says exactly that, and that's the order in which yes, they're in. It does. Okay. All right. So then, the next section is really uh, preparation for uh, for, for uh, communion, and it features the Prasitsa which has its own little section, and then a whole bunch of different versions of Orchana. Okay, one thing that's not a couple of things that are not in our books in as a tab is Yidin Siat Yisin. So uh, I forget right now what the voice was is uh, before that. Oh, Svetaya Sveti, and we sing, Yidin Svet, Yidin Gospod Jesus Christos, Slava Lord God Sami. There's no real tab for this. There are several sections after Port Shanach that have that have varieties of that. Kedrov is one, uh, Constantina is another that you'll find in here. But generally, we just basically sing this straight. And then, Prichasni uh, Stiki. Prichasni Stiki. Are, commemorat are commemoration specific, okay? uh, on a routine uh, with no quote, with unimportant quote unquote saints, Vaskresne Pichasne Stich is Holy Tigos for the Snibias and no others. Today we had Holy Tigos for the Snibias because it's a Sunday service, and we had Radni Tisaprai in the Gospodi because we're commemorating this, the fathers of the Ecumenical Councils. Okay? So the Prichas and the Stihi are in according to the Tzipikon, okay? And the way these are, or th these are probably the hardest to find for, for choir members, because they go from Koyite Gos for the Snibias to the text in alphabetical order by composer in alphabetical order. 
Okay, so you need at least a college degree to find that. Uh, and then uh, after that section, we have wherein we've put as the first thing the Trapad of Sretinya that we sing any time a child is, is brought into the, to the church the first time because that's sort of their Sretinya. Uh, and then other things. And the other things, as, as some of you may have noticed today, there are three or four works in that section that are specific to all Russian saints. The Stihira that we sang at the end, Domnia Fratu, and there's others, there's Vilichanya, uh, I think Tritsyakov is in there, I'm not sure. But the purpose of that originally, when I constructed the book, was that at any point in time, if, if we needed something that was really very much our church oriented, we could easily find it here. Normally, what we'll do is we'll sing the Chasne Stihi, as we've done, you know, as we do all the time. And then rather than do this, we go to our brown books that, that, that have room for all the other stuff. Okay. So this is the point during which the altar services take communion. Okay. So as we sing these things, uh, this, this actually, has been sort of a controversial part of, of church choir singing. Typically, well, not typically, but in some cases, they sang Pichasne Stihi as fast as they could on one note, on one chord, get it done, so that they could do some sort of concert work. Okay. And some clergy said, you know, we're taking communion at that point in time. So these things really need to be very congruent with a very solemn moment. So. Having, and and then this you know, was back in history and it recurs every now and then. This is why the Pichasne Stihi that we tend to sing are not terribly elaborate, but at the same time are not throw away one tones either. Okay, so that there's something there that, that you know has, has a little substance to it. And the selection of Razde Tisnepenia, what I try to do is to adhere to the commemoration that's happened. Okay. One of them today, because of the commemoration of the Mother of God icon of Kazan, this was a very simple Vichai. But I felt it had to be in the service because during the last week it was commemorated. And so that's sort of, you know, that's a judgment call, but that's how I tend to approach it. Tela Christova, obviously, Prishashchenya Giran, and Vitikum Svetisini, the Ispolnitsa, that is gratitude, are expressing gratitude for the for communion. Okay, we're almost done. At the end of this uh, or the second Menciphon and Yedinorod Nisinia, there is no break. Nobody's, you know, the priest doesn't have anything to say. So between here and here, that's a rapid fireplace. So as you're preparing your books and as you're about to sing when you do Samaya Gospada, make sure that you're ready to flip to the right and you know what seeing it without without getting a big interruption. And towards the end of the service, or in the preparatory part before communion, after Ochana. Is Yijin Sviat, Yijin Sviat, and then Prichasne Sihi. This is another place where there's no intonation by the clergy. So ideally, we need to keep you know, things moving. So in this place, Prichasne Sihi are probably one of the more complicated things for choir members to find. Um, I talk about them about five minutes before Yutubia starts. So those people who are there and listening, please pay particular attention to this because this could be a real mess if, if we don't. And it's, and it's too important a part of the service to, to, to not be done solemnly. Uh, for those of you who arrive after the beginning of liturgy, uh, you're missing the opportunity to set this up in your book, okay, as well as to look at the Bible. Yes. So, Vespers and Matins, very commemoration specific. 
For those of you who are not able to attend Vespers and, and Matins and are opera lovers, it's a little bit like coming at the third act. You know, you, yeah, you get to hear the finale, but there's an awful lot of story that you have no idea what happened. So I would really very, very much encourage uh, coming to, to Vespers and Matins. And, and it's, it's one of the few ways where on a routine basis you can reflect on both the Old and the New Testament in the matter of a couple of hours. Speaking of which, uh, one, of the, one of the things that, that most people uh, get scared of about Vespers and Matins, it's a long service. It actually isn't. Last night we started at 6, we were done by 8. More often than not, our Vespers and Matins will, will go two, two hours, you know, we'll, we'll quit about 8.15. Compared to many other parishes, uh, that's a lot shorter. Compared to some cathedrals, that's about 0.62 the amount of time. So this is, the, 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 you know, the, 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 there's plenty of recovery time after this. And I know myself, I'll be driving to rehearsals, I'll be driving to services, and I'm dead tired, and I'm not happy about the fact of going there. And then after the service, or after the, the rehearsal, I'm flying like a kite. Okay? I think a lot of us get very much afraid of, oh, this is long, oh, I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Come and witness it. This is a beautiful service. And I'm not telling you this as a preach because I'm a holy person. Okay? My connection with, with the whole all-night vigil started very late in life. It's when I heard the Rachmanin of Vespers, all-night vigil, Rachmanin. Musically, it made a tremendous impression on me. I had known Glassy, I had known good music, I knew about Ch Chisnakov, Tchaikovsky, and so forth. But what Rachmaninov did with those chants and how he glorified them into this magnificent piece of music actually drew me in to trying to learn a little bit about what all this stuff means. And this is not like, you know, 30 years ago. This is less than that. And, and so that music sort of sucked me into it. And I was still operating on a musical vein because I wanted to understand why did Rachmaninov write Blodesladien Nisigoskudi the way that he did? And the way that he did, for those of you who don't know it, it's almost a small operetta. It has soloists, it has refrains. It's a phenomenal piece of music. And once I, once I understood what the words were, then the meaning all, all of a sudden uh, of the music came out for me. And that's what drew me into the enormous vastness of information that you can acquire from this earth. That's as much of a commercial as I would do. Uh, but, you know, the opportunity to relive Old and New Testament in 102 hours to me is, is really cool. And obviously the culmination with liturgy. That's all I had prepared. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, uh, the next uh, one of these will be the next session that we have. Uh, and, and for those of you who are not choir members uh, but are interested in, in participating in things like this, our next choral series presentation is, will be a concert in October, I think it's the 25th, same format as previously. Please come. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.